about it as though it's a given fact that he died uh, uh, not under suspicious circumstances. Yes, exactly. But to me, the suspicious circumstances are very apparent. So what are we going to do now? There are too many things that don't add up. Why did Scalia refuse a security detail, by the way? I mean, that's beyond me. Like I said, that's something he would normally have had. I don't know if he was, you know, called, you know, maybe told, hey, you know, you're fine here, you're good here, don't worry about it, let your guard down, this is a good place. I mean, this is a, a, a really uh, secluded area. You, have, you can only have a couple hours a day to go in and out. You have to eat dinner at certain times. You know, people like Julia Roberts and all kinds of celebrities come here, and they go there for the, the, the tranquility of the peaceful uh, atmosphere to not be bothered. So it, it, it's interesting that this man of his stature, what, he is, what his job entails, the importance he has on America, the, the, the many lives and corporations that hang in the balance of his decisions, this is the kind of man who's made tons of enemies. That's why automatically looking at this person, who he is, you automatically investigate it. Well, not only has he made enemies, he has the power to change the course of human events. I mean, all of us at talk radio have made a lot of enemies, but we have no authority and no power. We can't change anything. We may think we can, but I learned a long time ago that we can't change a darn thing. I'm not like others in the media who think that they're important. I don't think I'm important. I'm an ordinary man with a microphone with a good mind and a good investigative uh, instincts. But the fact of the matter is, Judge Scalia just derailed the, the green gangsterism that Obama was so desperate to pass. It was his final achievement. God only knows what he's going to do now to get around that one. Do you know what it's going to cost the green gangster industry? A trillion a year is the minimum guess. A trillion a year they were ready to, to run rampant over the Constitution and rob the Treasury like they've never robbed it before in the final months of Obama's regime. We're speaking with a reporter on the ground, Joe Biggs for Infowars.com, on why the media is ignoring the death of Justice Antonin Scalia. We'll be right back. So that is our little arrangement, see? A real sweet setup. <laughs> And all the help we need for so you knock somebody off, I don't care who it is. There won't be any little arrangement. Hola. Not with Hank Quinlan. Well, that's for you. Yeah. Vargas can't hurt me. All right. It's a touch of evil, Orson Welles. Great movie. You have to understand what I'm trying to do here, and I think you don't. Now, there's another element to this, which we're going to talk about in the next two hours, maybe for the next two months. I may only do this for two straight months until one Republican stands up and demands an investigation. Maybe I'll do it for two straight months. Maybe, maybe not. Now, what if there's another side of the story? Remember The Godfather? Sorry to go back to fiction. Senator? Well, I, I don't remember anything. We play this game all the time. Senator, don't worry, my friend Frito owns this place. No one knows about this but us. What if the circumstances of the justice's death were somewhat embarrassing and the entire sweeping it under the rug is to protect his stellar reputation? Could that explain why the family requested no autopsy and why it took a half a day for the news to leak out? Am I allowed to ask the question? Are we living in a free republic or are we living in some kind of distorted reality of a bad totalitarian nightmare? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Senator, I don't remember anything. I, I played this game many times. Senator, my friend... My brother Frito owns this place. We're in the middle of the desert. 
Welcome to the Savage Nation. I'm relying upon the allegory of film to try to get through to the mass mind. The mass mind is as smart as a mushroom. It's like talking to a mushroom with eyes, the mass mind. This is what we have to do every day is talk to them. It doesn't mean you're stupid individually. It means the mass mind is a blob. The mass mind doesn't know anything. The mass mind is so overwhelmed by the lowest level of humanity on a daily basis that they can't even hear reality when it hits them in the eye anymore. Flooded by the garbage of, of our society, the filth, the sewer pipe. The sewer pipe of Hollywood has so polluted the average mind that when reality hits them in the face, they think it's fiction and they dismiss it. Having given you the prelude, I'll go on with the show, was Scalia murdered. I don't know, that's all we're asking. The show is talk radio for the thinking person. Thinking people are asking the question. It's that simple. All we're asking for is an investigation. Every homicide detective in America is asking that, but you didn't hear him. Oh, they haven't been invited to CNN. No, no, no. Only the stooges who say it was a natural death are invited on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC, CBS, NBC. Maybe uh, RT will give a, a question on this. Maybe Russian television will say, you know, this is something we should cover because this is something we're familiar with. We know about polonium sushi. In our country, polonium sushi is a regular uh, item on the menu for those political opponents that we want to uh, dispose of. But in America, they never heard of it. They think, that the, they think America is so pure that it couldn't happen there. The American people are so naive they believe in Santa Claus. The American people are so naive they let their little girl sell lemonade on the corner in a suburban neighborhood as though it's 1949 and everything is safe. America is so naive, the mothers are so drugged up, they don't even know what danger they're putting their daughters in by letting them sell a lemonade on the corner. That's the country that they live in. The country is being overrun by hordes, hordes from the south, hordes from the north, hordes from the east, hordes from the west, and little Lulu was selling lemonade on the corner. Suddenly it's 1950. That's the world. So you expect them to ask, why Sc was Scalia killed? And if you said that to them for a minute, here's what they'd say, who is Scalia? Is that the name of a restaurant chain? And why is it important to me if he died? And number three, even if someone murdered him, so what? What do I care? What does it matter to me? You don't know. You have no idea. The average thinking person has no idea what this country is composed of. None whatsoever. Raise a thin savior of the conservative or traditional ways in America, found dead under suspicious circumstances, and nobody is asking why. Why was he immediately this? Why was there no autopsy? Why were his bodily fluids thrown into the, uh, the river? Why did they shop it to some moron judge, Cinderella, whatever, who couldn't even say the word myocardial infarction? She couldn't say the word. He, she's the authority. She was 100 miles away. You got to listen to the clip. Listen to the judge, Cinderella Guevara, on declaring Scalia dead without an autopsy. Listen to 01. One of the things that I did ask the sheriff and the marshal that was there if there were any signs of foul play. And what they said, say? absolutely not. And then at that time, I still wanted to be careful, and that's why I asked if the physician would call me. His heart did stop. On the death certificate, it'll say myocardial, myocardial infarction. Myocardial infraction. To her, it's the same thing, myocardial infraction. It'll be the same as myocardial infarction. What's the difference? Well, in fact, in America today, she'd probably be given a White House invitation for saying, uh, saying it the wrong way. It'd be considered some kind of uh, oppressive society that insists upon correct pronunciation. But look, I raised something else, which is, and this is an embarrassing one, and I know the conservatives don't want to hear it, but since it's a show that has to be fair to the subject matter, and since we're, we're being cynical and questioning, and ske skeptical rather, skeptical, not cynical. A cynic wouldn't even ask the question, a skeptic would. One of my listeners writes, is it possible the circumstances of his death are somewhat embarrassing, and the cover-up is an effort to protect his stellar reputation? That might explain why it took half a day to get the news out and why the family requested no autopsy. That's sent to us by Terry Cruz, not Cruz, not related to the candidate who says nothing. Where is uh, Ted Cruz on this? 
Ted Cruz said nothing on this. Well, he's, the, he's the savior of the, of the republic. He said nothing. Zero. Now, what else can we talk about? Pillow is between his head and the headboard. Now, well, first it was on his head, and that was behind his head, and it was before the head. I didn't mean it was on his head. I meant it was near his head. I didn't mean it was on top of his face. I meant it was close to his face. I meant the headboard and the pillow was similar to what I was saying with regard to the pillow. I didn't mean that even though I got an award from the president, even though I give money to the Democrats. I didn't mean there was a pillow over his face. I meant there was a pillow near his face that was over the backboard in front of the headboard. And that's why I said it the way I did, because in Texas, as you know, we're just a bunch of dumb geeks, and we don't know anything from anything, so don't take anything we say seriously. And there is no toxicological report, because no one in this area of Texas knows what the word toxicology means. That's it. We drink toxic water down here because we're as tough as rattlesnakes. And if you think we can't drink toxic water in this part of Texas, then, boy, you belong in San Francisco. That's all I can say to you. Go get yourself a cappuccino. Get yourself a cappuccino, because down here we drink coffee, black coffee. We don't drink no cappuccinos. You want to talk about this, Barney? Barney, KBET, you're uh, in Las Vegas, I assume? Yes, we're from Las Vegas. What we have here is a cover-up of a suicide. Don't you think the family would have really carried on to the end of the earth if they didn't know what was going on? They don't want no investigation. This was a suicide, plain and simple. Take the pills, you lie down, you fold your hands. All right, so let's let's say your theory of suicide has some has validity, which I doubt. It still would require an autopsy and investigation. Do you understand that, Barney? Yes, of course. I work for it. It's not important. Nevertheless, the family... Wait, wait, wait. Hold it. You said you worked where, Barney? I worked once in the police department years ago. It's not important. What is important is that... The family has power, and they know what they're doing. They talk to the right people. They acceded to his wishes, and he went down to a secluded place, and he died. And they don't want no hubbub like you're carrying on about. Wait, wait, but, sir, even if you are correct that it was a suicide, it still requires an autopsy. Uh, yes, but for some reason they didn't want one. Why wouldn't, don't you think your family... Well, it doesn't matter whether they want, it does not matter whether the family wanted one or not. That's what I'm trying to say to you. The law requires one under suspicious circumstances. Well, sometimes the law is ignored for powerful people. Well, all right, so that makes it right? So you just, you just uh, ruined your own argument. I didn't say it made it right. I'm telling you what I believe happened down there. Oh, but you also said I have no right to even ask the question. I'm embarrassing the family. I didn't, I didn't say that. I'm saying that the family exceeded to his wishes. He went to a nice secluded area, laid down there after he took some pills. And died. He probably had some very serious illness. Maybe his mind was going to be tampered with soon. He didn't want this to happen, and he ended it. All right. Let's say you have a valid point. It still requires an autopsy and an investigation. Well, obviously, that's superfluous now. No, it's not superfluous. They do, they do investigations after a person's been buried. They can disinter a body. What do you mean it's superfluous? Okay, you're, you're correct about that. You're definitely All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barney. That's all. KSFO, San Francisco. I can hardly, hardly say it. Let me try it again. I should practice. San Francisco, KSFO. Ron, welcome to the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, from 1979 to 1982, I worked in a funeral home to pay my way through school in Hartford, Connecticut. And I could tell you with authority that I've handled probably 200 cases during that time that even at the slightest hint of something being wrong, whether it be a convalescent home, and we had our share of murders also, the police would become involved, other people in authority would become involved, questions would be asked, and, and uh, they were very strict about this. And, and this thing stinks from the head down. Plain simple. Ron, and you're saying they required an investigation even if it was an ordinary Joe Blow. This is the most important justice in America. And the future of America was in his hands, and he's found dead, and there's no investigation, and the media doesn't ask a question. What does that say to you about the media? It says something that, like you always say, uh, the top rots from the head down. And you mean the head rot? Yeah, the, yeah a body rots from the head down, right? That, a, f a fish rots. A fish rots from the head down. Yes, and that that in Connecticut here. 
during my time that I was here, the medical examiner um, 